silent or turn them off. We appreciate it. We have U.S. head coach Jurgen Klinsmann. Jurgen, your thoughts on tonight's match? Well, my my thoughts. Uh, I think um, the team tried really hard to do what we asked them to do. You know, we asked them to step it up after the Honduras game, another notch, and uh, they did that. I think they played a brilliant first half, created lots of chances, didn't score, but didn't allow anything for Ecuador at all there. Then uh, we had to make some changes. We made them also because we want to give players possibilities to express themselves and show themselves so we voted a couple of guys in. Um, Ecuador's second half got better into the game and uh, uh, created some chance but never really any threat for Tim Howard so he never really had anything to do in that game besides that one beautiful goal that they scored. Um, that kind of makes you feel like you know you put all that effort in there, all that work you know and you think actually you should get awarded but uh, it went the other way, way around and this is very good experience for us to make. This is important for these players uh, to understand that one little thing can change a game and decides a game and goes the other way. Um, I think we saw many, many good things in that game. Um, I mean, starting maybe with uh, Gucci in the back, he's back. Well, maybe that's the easiest way to say it. And that's awesome to see. You know, he's getting his rhythm and his, his presence is. Uh, is uh, is amazing and, and, and really good to watch. You know, you see a Timmy Chandler on the left back. He didn't allow Valencia not even one thing. And you're talking about a player that plays for Man, at Man United and is a very very good player, but you couldn't see him at all because Timmy Chandler closed him completely down. You know, you see uh, Kyle how he cleans up uh, things in midfield, and um, and you take a lot of good things from from a game like that. A Brad Shea that is definitely on the rise here. Uh, secure the spot in the starting lineup now as a youngster, 21 years of age. You know, you have a Danny Williams that broke into the team within two games. He's in there. You know, you think that he's always been here since a couple of years. That was just his first couple of days. So I think we, we take a lot of really positive things uh, from that game. Obviously, ah, you are still upset because of the result. No, no doubt about it. You could raise your question. You have a hate question. Brian, go ahead. What was your vantage point on the goal? I don't know what your view was, but you Well, I mean, those are the kind of split seconds you've got to be aware of. Actually, we uh, showed it also the players that they're very good in crossing balls in, and they're very determined to go into those crosses. That's how they scored their goals also against Venezuela and, 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 and in games that we, we, we showed the team. But, you know, you've got to live through that moment, and it's different. So um, that's a learning moment for for Tim Ream, that he has to be in front of the guy, that he has to kind of unbalance him. If he doesn't get the ball, then you've got to make sure that he's not getting the ball either. Um, but it's good, you know, so Tim needs these moments. He needs these minutes uh, on that level in order to learn. There's nothing bad about it, you know. It's uh, just disappointing that, you know, uh, we, on the other hand, we didn't score until that point, and it takes your... You know, basically, all the work that you put in for eight, nine days, it takes it a bit away. Frank. Uh, Coach, um, Reeves had a very difficult year in MLS this year. Uh, did you say to him anything after the game? And, and have you seen a difference in his play this year as opposed to last year? Well, I didn't see him so often last year. I think uh, he's one of the very promising center backs in this uh, country, and that's why he's in the squad. He deserves to be in the squad. Um, and he's extremely well to learn. He's a constant asker. He's, uh, he wants to know, you know, how do I get to the next level? What do I have to do? I think he learns a tremendous amount from Carlos Bucanega, from Gucci, uh, these guys. And uh, um, and we throw him in now in a moment like that because he needs to smell that level. He needs to get a taste of it, and uh, he needs to make minutes and minutes in order to learn and in order to learn how to anticipate and how to get in front of your uh, striker to read the space and all that. I think even after that, that goal happened, then, you know, he stayed focused and you now he shook it off, which we always ask the players, you know, forget about the mistakes, you can't change them anymore. You know, go forward, you know, and he did that and he had then a solid uh, last 15 minutes then and uh, um, those are the, the experiences he needs and, and uh, I think he's definitely on a, on a very good path.
Just before we continue, I know there's a couple uh, German-speaking reporters here tonight. If you wouldn't mind waiting to ask your questions at the end, we'll take them in German once we finish with English. Thanks. Christian. I just want to ask you, Coach, given your comments yesterday about needing to extend the season, is Breck Shea one of those players that need, that would benefit from that? And what are your thoughts on his fitness tonight? Uh, well, I mean, his fitness level is, is good. You know, I mean, we train really uh, high intensity here the whole uh, eight, nine days in camp. And uh, he comes and says, well, you know, the more I train, the, the fitter I feel. <laughs> so he can take that, obviously. He's, he's young and he's uh, full of energy and, and full of enthusiasm. And, uh, um, and our job now going forward is, you know, to, to take the player's schedule and look at, at every individual schedule in order to bridge the gap towards the next season. You know, players like him or Buena Godello or Tim Ream or, you know, all the guys that now go towards the end of the season, they can't stop. You know, they got to go because uh, um, at that level, like we experienced today with an Ecuadorian team, they, they play 11, 11 and a half months a year. So, so we have to make sure that uh, Greg stays fit, stays in a rhythm and all the other guys as well that are going towards the end of their season. Ron. Jürgen, with what you're trying to do, how different do you think the team will look when you have Dempsey and Donovan on the field together and eventually? Well, I, I think definitely, I mean, if you have Lennon in here, if you have Jose Torres here, if you have Fabian Johnson that you haven't seen yet uh, um, in the real game, which is a similar player to Danny Williams, you bring quality. You really bring quality into that side and that's uh, uh, something that we will benefit from. And uh, um, it's, a, it's a growing process we're going through uh, that will take time. Um, and, uh, and obviously also a couple of knocks that you have to accept and you get them on that, on that path. And, uh, um, but I think if you look at the overall roster, we have the really a, a good team together that is highly competitive than going into the World Cup qualifiers. So um, looking forward to have Landon back, have Ossie back, and Fabian Johnson in the house. Yeah. Brian Strauss. Um, I was gonna ask them. I, I was curious just over the course of these two games, um, what you've learned about the team and the attack. You're, you're clearly using Dempsey as a central player. Um, what else have you seen develop uh, as you try to implement your offensive system uh, over the last couple of games? Well, we, we uh, purposely tied out then today, the, the last half an hour, how it works with two forwards mm -hmm. and Dempsey in the number 10 role, meaning in a, in a diamond shape in midfield. You know, this is also something that we here and there have to do. You know, obviously, if Landon is the background, then it looks it looks different. Uh, but but uh, um, Dempsey clearly has that experience. He can play either way as a floater behind the number nine, or as a, as a ten, or, or a pure midfielder in a, in a flat midfield like he does at Fulham, coming from the left side. Um, but we are obviously have to try out different options, and we also have to throw in Juan. We have to throw in Edson that is actually doing extremely well since a couple of weeks. You know, he went from being here kind of the Stein MLS to go to a second division team in Germany and gives it a shot. So he was a big fish here, he's a small fish over there, and he keeps fighting his way through. And he showed that in training. He really deserved that uh, um, that opportunity today. And and we keep working with these guys, you know, and I think they can only improve. Thank you. You're welcome. If, if I understood Coach Oida's response in the, his press conference, the question was asked about what area he thought was uh, vulnerable, what part of the U.S. team. He said the midfield. I was wondering if you would comment on his comment. Our midfield, basically. Uh, he thought that that was yeah. the area he was trying to expose because he thought that was the most vulnerable part of the U.S. game. Well, he had here and there some opportunities in the second half, coming a bit through the middle, I would say, over the wings. I think, you know, they couldn't create anything. You know, if one of his midfield strengths is certainly Valencia, well, you didn't see him today. He was not there because Tim, Tim Chandler took care of him. So it depends how a game goes then throughout the whole 90 minutes, but I think that we didn't allow much, you know. But it is a team that if you allow him, then one little thing, you know, they can make that difference. Um, so I don't think that the midfield was a big issue. Dave. Juan Agadello is a uh, talented player, but uh, he looked a bit invisible tonight on the attack. Uh, do you think that it has, is that a byproduct of the fact that he hasn't been seeing many minutes in MLS? 